So when did you complete your one full reading of the content and question mark? It was not until the first week of July, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, it was the first week of July. So I completed that first reading in which I just watched the lecture, watched the lectures and read the surgeon notes and solved each question mark, each chapter of question mark. Okay. What was the score you got in the GARP one? In the GARP one, I was initially expecting to get around 60, but seeing that I got 50, I was a little disheartened. When you looked at the exam, how much difficult it was as compared to the GARP sample paper? Like the level of the questions on the actual exam day were pretty much similar with the GARP sample paper. Okay. They were closely resembling. Even I would not be wrong to say that some of the concepts, not the questions, but the concepts were directly related or directly like it was directly matching, like what I had okay. done previously okay. at my home. Now, if somebody comes and asks you, what are the three tips that anybody should have, okay, that you can give from your experience of clearing FRM level two? What would that be? Hello, guys. I hope everybody is doing good. Hi, this is Ganesh Nayak. I help finance professionals and students to excel in their career and become a better version of themselves. And I also help students preparing for competitive exams like CFA, FRM and SCR. And today I am back with one of my students who has been able to clear the FRM level 2 exam in the August attempt. And he's going to be talking about his journey of clearing the exam. Okay, so we have with us Nipun. Nipun, thank you very much for taking out time. And uh, you're, you're, you're from Kolkata and you're here in Mumbai for the podcast. Thank you very much. And for the audience, if you can tell that when did you give the level 1 exam? What were you doing after that? And when did you start preparing for the level 2 exam? Okay. Uh, before I start the podcast, sir, I would like to thank you for inviting me. And uh, I gave my FRM part 1 exam in the month of May in mm -hmm. 23. Okay. And uh, then after clearing this the exam, I started my preparation for the CFA level 1 examinations. Okay. Which I gave in February 24. And after that, I started my preparation for FRM part 2. Okay. And uh, I started my preparation in the month of May. March. March, sorry. <laughs> March, March 24. Okay. And uh, initially I was thinking that I should appear for the May cycle, like the May 24. And, and I would prepare for like two months and then I'll appear it. But then seeing the syllabus and uh, you suggested that it would be a very neck to neck situation. Mm. So it is better to uh, go for the August cycle. August exam. Yeah. And then I registered for the examination for the August one right. and I started my preparation. Perfect. And for the audience, uh, you're currently in the second year of your college. Yeah, my second year just got completed. So I'm in my third year right now. Okay, so third year just started. So in your yeah, second year, you've completed level one, level two and FCFA also. Yeah. Wonderful. Now, uh, when you started in March, did you yeah. follow a particular order of books and how much time you were giving each day? These okay. two primary things. So yeah, in the month of March, I remember I, I was just attending my college and nothing else. Mm. So I followed your planner, which you gave. And in that, I started my preparation with the liquidity book. And in that, I was easily able to cover each chapter daily, like one, one chapter each day. Okay. And while completing those chapters, I was watching the lectures then reading the notes mm. and then uh, solving the each chapter by question man. So it was very comfortable for, for me. After that, I remember. So I'd like to give the flow first. Mm -hmm. So I did liquidity first. I started with liquidity. Okay. Then it was market. Then it was, I guess, yeah, credit risk. Then it was operations. And then it, the last book, the investment and the current issues. Current issues at the end. Okay. Yeah. And you were watching only one chapter ka video every single day. Yeah. And solving also? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So that was the average one chapter per day per, per day. Yeah. So when did you complete the one full reading with question solving? In May, in March, I was very comfortable because I was just attending my college mm. and I was just, uh, you know, studying for the rest of the day. So I was a little less tensed and everything was comfortable. Okay. But in, but in the month of April, uh, actually I got an uh, opportunity to work with a small uh, brokerage firm in Calcutta itself. Okay. So it was a little hectic because first I had to attend my college, which was early morning. Mm -hmm. After that, I used to report to the college, uh, to the office. Office, okay. And then in the evening, I used to go back home and uh, study for uh, like a couple of hours in the night. And mm -hmm. then again, this repeated for a couple of months. On the weekends, I remember I used to like stretch my studying hours okay. where I could easily complete two to three chapters on in a day. Each day. Yeah. 
but in weekday how many number of hours with with the job and college yeah, you were so, able to prepare uh not more than one and a half hours or two hours not more than that okay so march you get got entire time free yeah from april till when the april till uh july i would say that was the internship period yeah 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 i actually uh, left that internship because uh preparation was uh, yeah because okay. i was little tense that my exam was in august and i was not able to complete my syllabus and everything okay. was pending so for that matter i uh, so when did you complete your one full reading of the content and question mark it was not until the first week of july if i'm not wrong yeah it was the first week of july so i completed that first reading in which i just watched the lecture watched mm-hmm. the lectures and read the swaja notes and solved each question mark each chapter ka question mark okay then in the first week of july when i completed that mm-hmm. i without wasting any time further i uh started the revision okay and uh, for the revision i took roughly around 15 days like mm-hmm. two weeks close to two weeks where i revised the whole content again okay and uh, yeah if i was able to solve the questions for the chapters which i felt were difficult i did that as well so yeah for the revision part that was it but did you once you did the revision you did uh, sectional test yeah yeah i appeared the book was full test yeah 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 i gave that as well okay. but it was at the later end of the revision not in the initial not in the initial part i at gave those yeah at the end and then uh, how many mocks did you gave for the exam and what did you, how much time you revised for it okay so uh, i remember the whole of july was just revising because i was mm. a little stressed out because uh, initially when i thought of appearing for the exam i was pretty sure that yeah i had a lot of times so i would revise a couple of times more okay and it would be very easy right. but seeing that i was short of time again so it was only <laughs> a only once or twice which i was able to revise completely the whole syllabus mm. and then in the month of august i remember i planned out watching after your video that how should you plan your mock yes, and everything yes. so i watched that video and it was just the perfect timing for me okay. because i was anyways i was going to call you and ask you that how should i go about it and you just dropped the video so after okay. watching that i uh, you know made my own timeline that yeah i would uh, on these dates before the exam i would appear for the mock and then i would analyze those and some things like that so yeah to answer your question it was a week before not and how many mocks only two sir but that was uh, institute the, mock or my mocks the gart sample mock i gave those huh. mocks in a proper setting the okay. two mocks and I didn't ignore your mocks because you said that you have to go through that once. So what I did was instead of uh, solving those with that time restriction, mm-hmm. I uh, just uh, I have just gone through those questions. You just looked at the question and answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the score you got in the GARP one? In the GARP one, I was initially expecting to get around sixty, but seeing that I got fifty, I was a little disheartened. It was out around fifty. Out of eighty, fifty questions were right. Yeah, yeah. It, it was close to fifty. It was not fifty. It was close to fifty. Okay. it was close i forgot that actually and what was the confidence after seeing that score uh, yeah i was not feeling good because i thought that it it would touch 60 because mm. i was I, i had a little that competitive spirit you no know, you have to get that 60 mm-hmm. or something like that to you know be on the safer side on the exam day on the actual exam day right but then you uh, but then i when i when i had a conversation with you after that you said that Ah yeah, it's okay. Don't uh, the score doesn't matter here. You mm. now after you analyze have, your mistakes. Analyze your mistakes, yeah. And what went wrong, especially the GARP sample paper, the topics which are getting tested. I think so. Those topics are very important. Those yeah. topics can be tested easily in your exam. Yeah. On the day of the exam, uh, I'm assuming that you were not feeling nervous because you've already given two yeah competitive exams. So what was happening on the day? I'd like to uh, start with just a day before. I know it's not necessary, but. it's relevant for the audience to know what happened okay so what happened was uh, i was done with all my mock revisions the uh, reading of the important concepts and the important formula i saw those as well but just one day before the exam i don't know how but i got a viral fever it it was viral nothing yeah, oh, okay. nothing nothing major as such nothing major as such but my head started peening and everything like that so for that for that day i didn't study anything at all and i visited my family doctor he suggested some medicines i and i told him my situation that more is my exam and i have to sit for mm. this four long hours and can you suggest something like that so he suggested me medicines that you know would make me feel dizzy on the exam day okay so i took those and i went for my exam so to be very honest i don't even remember a single bit of that day because when i started my exam i just again i just 
blanked out because the first few questions for me for me okay. were so easy that i got overconfident by doing that what i did was i skipped those questions because i knew that okay. if i would become that overconfident i would go and solve those questions it might happen that i might might get it wrong so okay. i skipped some of the initial questions mm. and i started again with a calm mind after the 6th or the 7th question and yeah from once i get, uh, got the got that uh, you know spirit of again solving the questions be be pa- being patient and everything mm. so it got comfortable for me okay and uh, seeing that i was in that uh, condition of that you know air air, air room condi- air ac condi- room yeah ac room yeah so uh, I, i was uh, feeling i was not feeling good at that time okay so what i planned that after solving the 10 questions or the 20 questions i'd take a break of 5 minutes i'd go out walk a little bit then again come back okay. so i fo- so i did that it actually helped because it actually helped me to clear my head although they suggested me not to go out frequently mm. but but yeah but i told them what what i was feeling so they allowed me to go out of that room okay for okay. a couple of times that was it but, yeah that was it i would okay but try. how many theory how many calculation questions were there around 25 to 30 were calculations and you were able to manage those properly yeah i remember i left around 4 to 5 of those i completely i okay. lost the track of the formulas and everything so i was not able to solve this and what about theory theory was very tough mm-hmm. sir some questions were like very straight forward like you mm. like if you have read the solution notes before and you have followed the concepts very well you'll be able to connect the dots and you'll be able to reach the answer by elimination okay so some questions were very straight forward like that mm. but for the other ones the options were very very close very close like you like there was just a difference of a couple of words here and there mm-hmm. so it was a little tricky but uh, yeah by the method of elimination which you have told in one of our sessions that right, you should eliminate right. the options and look for the better one yes yes so i did that and luckily i got some of those questions correct by but by just doing that okay yeah. interesting now uh, when you looked at the exam how much difficult it was as compared to the garp sample paper the both the garp sample papers sir which i appeared and uh, the questions which i saw on our intelligence portal i also remember that that i had a couple of other mocks as well so i had mm-hmm. gone through those as well so broadly speaking sir the like the level of the exa- like the level of the questions on the actual exam day were pretty much similar with the garp sample paper Okay. they were closely resembling even i would not be wrong to say that some of the concepts not the questions but the concepts were directly related okay. or directly like it was directly matching like what i had okay. done previously okay. at my home okay and when you came out of the exam what was the situation and what was the number in your mind sir when i came out i i was just not feeling good because there were two questions and i remember if, if i had got a little more extra time of like like say only 5 minutes more i would have easily been able to solve those okay. like the two questions which i remember because i because the formula was again in my mind but i was not able to solve it okay because i was not okay. able to focus because again headache and all so it was a mess but on a broader level i i had a relief that yeah it has gone as i had expected okay. nothing major as such but yeah and but the number was there in your mind that i'll get 60 i'll get 50 mm, no sir no, okay. no i didn't i didn't track that because uh in the last moment uh, i just uh, reviewed the flag questions once mm. and i there were questions which uh, i just uh, you know marked whichever was the best i thought okay so i didn't uh, you know counted the numbers in the end i was just focusing on getting the correct answer at the right moment because mm. in the panic situation when you get in that panic situation you don't see anything else you just have to look for the right answer right so that was what was in my head okay. and yeah so it was a little bit little bit messy around that time okay okay but uh, yeah i i was feeling good after after the exam i was feeling good because i was relieved that yeah whatever you have taught and whatever i have studied the hard work which i did over the months hmm. it all that some in some kind it had, it, it has been justified okay. what i believe yeah. okay and what are the quartiles if you remember uh, for the books yeah yes yeah. so my i don't know the order but i know the quartiles so it was 2 2 2 1 4 3 Two, 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 one, four, three. Okay, wow. Yeah. So first three books, which are the major books, you got second quartile. Yeah, that is a good sign, basically. A lot of students they fail because creditors they get fourth quartile, okay. or they get third quartile. Similarly, they are getting not doing very good in market risk. Mm-hmm. These are the two books which generally people uh, fail because of. And 
now uh, if i ask you two major question first what is the me uh, what is the worst thing that you did in your entire preparation or what what is the mistake that you did in your entire preparation well, let yeah. me do. so for that matter i would say that i in the month of may yeah in the month of may i had my college semester examination hmm. again so each time i appear for my uh, like cfa or frm exams there are college examinations mm-hmm. before that so again for a good 10 days or around 15 days i didn't even touch the books hmm. because because the office where i was working they didn't give me any off off for that uh, you know preparation for the college examination okay. for that matter. okay so i had to again attend my college appear for the exams for my college then right. uh, then i have to report to the office and then again come back and study so i in amidst that i didn't get any time to uh, you know prepare for the chapters for fm okay yeah that was the big major major mistake even on the weekends even if i tried it didn't happen right it's so, not in the flow of preparation not in the flow of preparation so for two weeks i just couldn't do anything now if somebody comes and ask you what are the three tips that anybody should have okay that you can give from your experience of clearing frm level 2 what would that be so uh, i remember in the previous videos we have discussed the tips now it's pretty much the same that you you, you should be con- consistent on your right. preparation there should be there shouldn't be any major deviations mm-hmm. first is that then again the other ones like um you should start early you should focus more on solving the questions after your revision right. these are the very standard, basic very basic standard one. tips now for particularly for the p2 what i would like to add on is mm. first is you should focus on the major concepts like you should not skip any of the content because the i would say the quantum of syllabus is huge so you can't just go on the details of everything but you should know on a broader sense that yeah these are the topics and you should be comfortable with that mm. and again the another thing which i would like to add is it is not at all recommended because it's a strategy which i used in the final leg of my preparation like the last 3 to 4 okay. days that is when i had revised a couple of times and i had appeared for the mock examinations as well okay. so what i did what i saw was a pattern which i could easily identify that there are certain portions which were very important in terms of testability on the exam day okay so i marked those sections there were certain portions which i would say were very important in terms of your understanding because if you don't understand that concept you wouldn't be able to connect the dots later on right so there were some concepts which you have to focus on understanding in depth in depth like mm. no matter how tough it is you should not skip those portions right and yeah so i highlighted those sections the portions which i thought were important for the testability of the exam mm. i highlighted those sections on and before just before the exam like four to five days or a couple uh, like just one week before or days like that i just focused on do- those concepts okay. a little more samjha okay got it yeah there is smart way of looking at the most testable concepts yeah because yeah because on the like just before the exam it is because the the syllabus is huge huge and if you just start going again and again through the whole uh, syllabus it might happen that you might underestimate certain uh, concepts and you might overestimate certain concepts so right, right. you have to find that right balance between those wonderful wonderful thank you i mean nipun for taking out time and talking to us giving a sneak peek into your journey of clearing the FRM level two. This is going to be very, very helpful for a lot of students who are going for the exam now in November next May. So thank you again for taking out time. Thank you, sir. Thank you.